Hello again, Chrissy here at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Chrissy, a seven-year homeschool mom of five children from early childhood all the way through senior high school. For today's video, I thought I'd share the current resources I'm utilizing for language arts with my elementary age students, six to 10 years old. Most of our subjects are grouped together with some slight modifications for varying skills. However, there is one resource that I work one-on-one -on -one with my youngest for reading preparedness, and we'll get into that as well. So the pattern that you'll see today is reading, reading. Through reading, children are exposed to and learning elements of grammar, spelling, vocabulary, writing, and more. Our main resource or spine for language arts are literature guides by Hearth Magic. However, Amber, the creator of Hearth Magic, calls them family learning guides. I've chosen one guide so far, leaving room open for new releases or requests from the kids. In mid-October, we're starting with Journeying Through the Middle Ages with Red Wall. This guide is over 100 pages, including activities for each chapter, like art tutorials, copywork, medieval history projects, medieval music, creative writing, woodland, animal projects, handwork, recipes, and more. One of our favorite elements or work within the literature guides is character journaling. It's one of my favorite ways to discuss and teach empathy and perspective. The kids create illustrations and I encourage them to write down some character traits too, which is great practice for adjectives and new vocabulary. Another literary concept we're learning about in this guide is foreshadowing, and I'm looking forward to that. Of course, looking forward to the Middle Ages history and making connections with biblical history. And my personal favorite type of work that is included in every guide is the seasonal work. I've carved out plenty of time for this block being that it is such a hefty guide. I anticipate that this will carry us right up until the winter season breaking for the holidays, just in time for our Christmas break. And if you're curious, uh, Amber at Hearth Magic recommends this guide for ages 5 to 12 years old. For some one-on-one -on -one time with my Luna, who is age six, and she is my last non-reader who I'm teaching reading to, we're still working through together uh, the Alphabet Through the Fairy Tales by Amber at Hearth Magic. This series of fairy tale sets is inspired by the Waldorf approach of teaching children to read through a gentle and gradual unfolding, starting with oral storytelling, then pictorial forms, and then writing. This set includes the fairy tale story along with companion activities, our main lesson, book illustrations, handiwork, recipes, tongue twisters, and poetry, and even word families to practice. And for more literacy, we're continuing with uh, their reading journals that are paired with independent readers, and these have been working so wonderfully. These are reading prompt menus by Simply Creative Teaching on Teachers Pay Teachers. There are 54 response activities, fiction and nonfiction options. The skills used uh, include studying character traits, book reviews, main idea, beginning, middle, end, problem and solution, text connection, vocabulary, new beginning or endings, and a lot more. Reading prompts are a great resource for independent work and we reach for them on the days we're not working on a read aloud and family learning guide together. During reading, we're working on syllable division to decode hard words. We love this board by Jack and Link. I hauled it in my last video. It's a wooden board, a dry erase tile that fits in like so, and these three markers that can be moved around. This board is also great for working on prefix, suffix, and compound words. Mm -hmm. 
The Usborne First Illustrated Grammar and Punctuation, we use this as a reference guide and sometimes we just read through it spread by spread. It's an easy to use introduction to grammar and punctuation for young children, featuring sections on nouns, adjectives, punctuation, writing skills, and more. With simple explanations, colorful illustrations, and lots of examples throughout, plus quizzes, writing tips, and links to specially selected websites with puzzles and videos. The layout is digestible with these snippets and pop-ups of information, so you don't have these full page spreads of information to read through, but just bite-sized pieces that keep my kids engaged along with all the colorful illustrations. And so here's another example with another Usborne resource. Bella is working through the creative Usborne illustrated book. I should add she's slowly working through it as it goes along with middle school grade standards of ELA for Florida. This book gives children ideas for writing stories poems, comics, blogs, reviews, movie scripts, and more. There are activities for creating characters and bringing them to life, which is what Bella is working on now, and she's having such a great time with it. There are dialogue, listicles, points of view, flashbacks, genre, imagery, imagery poetic forms, not only are the prompts fun and engaging, but again, also the layout, all the imagery, colorful illustrations. There's a good amount of writing space, not enough writing space tends to frustrate my Bella, but she's also not facing daunting blank pages as she's working through writing. So Bella and I are both super happy with this resource. Bella is still enjoying Night Zookeeper and so we will continue using it as a writing supplement. If you're plugged into the homeschool world at all, then I'm sure you're familiar with Night Zookeeper. This is a reading and writing program that also builds the child's creative thinking. I asked Bella what part of Night Zookeeper she enjoys the most and it's the zookeeper theme. Uh, she also enjoys creating new animals she also finds the storyline interesting and the feedback keeps her motivated. I have an affiliate code for Night Zookeeper listed in the description box if you're interested in learning more about this program. Mad Libs is one of our favorite ways to practice grammar. There are many topics to Mad Libs from your favorite characters to zoology or history. There are even websites to create your own Mad Libs, making endless grammar practice and laughs with your favorite read-alouds, uh, topics, or movies too. For spelling and vocabulary, we like to supplement with crosswords and word search. Luna, my six-year-old, has been watching her siblings do word search for years, so she asked for her own book. This book is by Scholastic, targeted for ages 5 to 7, with simple topics and vocabulary like shapes, colors, foods, members of the family, pets. I recently found this one on Amazon for Bella and Noah, Nature Theme Word Search and Coloring Book. This one is my favorite word search so far. And lastly, we supplement with games, a lot of games. So I'll start with some of Luna's favorite and hers is Fairy Tale Storytelling by Ibu. This one is great for imaginative storytelling. Again, starting with that oral uh, storytelling, social skills, and even narration. She also loves Happy Hats by Bob Books for developing readers, building and reading CVC words. DK Silly Sentences is a staple in a lot of homes for grammar practice, and another favorite for grammar practice here is Treehouse Town by The Good and the Beautiful. This is a simple uh, game, so I would say it's more appropriate for younger children, maybe ages 5 to 7. Another game by The Good and the Beautiful Bella and I used for many years and is now passed on to Noah is Luke and Lily by The Lighthouse. This is a card game similar to Memory Match, matching two words to make a compound word. And a classic that's wonderful for adjectives is Guess Who? To keep this game new, I swap out the cards for various topics like ocean or space theme. There are many printable options on Etsy. There are even templates available for you to make your own.
all right guys that's it for this video i hope this video was helpful to you in showing you a glimpse of how i teach language arts without a language arts curriculum but more how language arts can be taught through reading and reading and reading some more if you're interested in any of the resources i mentioned today please check the description box i always try to link as much as i possibly can as always, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Let me know what you're loving for teaching language arts or any resource recommendations. Please like this video. It helps me out a lot in this YouTube algorithm. And as always, thanks so much for your love.